Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today I'm going to present uh, about inversions. So first, what is inversions? What are they? Well, inversion is to invent something. It's from the verb to invert. It's either to turn it upside down or to turn something upside down or to change the order of something. So in the context of English grammar, it is all about changing the order of words. So what did what basically is, is about a, a reversal of normal word order, especially the placement of a verb ahead of subject, instead of the normal subject before the verb. So here's a famous line from uh, Lord of the Ring, from J.R. Tolkien. In a hole in the ground, there lived a hobbit. So that's one example of an uh, inversion. Lah. Okay. So, uh, next. What is the significance of inversions in grammar? So, as an English speaker, we don't have to use inversions as, at all in our daily life. And it's perfectly, perfectly fine. First of all, my name is Mohamed Taufik Ben Yusri. So, now what is the significance of inversion? So, as an English speaker, we don't have to use inversion at all in our daily life and it's perfectly fine. But not if you are going to take an advanced English test like IELTS or UN exam where you need to show an extensive use of English, you will be expected to know about invasion. So invasion is often used to emphasize something, basically something like an expression such as never, rarely, no sooner and only then. So this will make sentence to have more impact when used at the beginning of the sentence. Okay. So. In essence, uh, inversion is a special structure which uh, the auxiliary verb comes before the subject. In other words, we use the interrogative form of the verb in an affirmative sentence. This structure is used to put emphasis on what is said and is considered more formal. So, uh, these are the few uh, types of inversion. Uh, first, negative word or phrases plus auxiliary verb plus subject and plus main verb. Will form uh, inter interrogative form, uh. and then the second one is so such plus inversion. The other one is conditional plus inversion. The other one is so neither no plus inversion, and uh, the last one is uh, inversion that comes after only or not until. Okay, so the next one we are going to go through the first one, which is a negative word or phrase plus inversion. So. Uh, we will see words like uh, never, rarely, scarcely, hardly, ever, seldom, not often, hardly, when, no sooner than, little, at no time, not once, not, plus an object, on no account, on no condition, under no circumstances, in no case. So these are the words that are commonly used for inversion. Lah. So uh, I'm giving you an example right now. Huh? So first one, never have I tasted a more delicious cake. Another one is hardly had I got into the house when the phone rang. No sooner had she opened the door than she heard a loud noise coming from the kitchen. Not often will you find such bargains. Little did she know that they were gossiping behind her back. Under no circumstances she should she tell them that wow. Under no circumstances she will tell them what you should know. I'm sorry. And then uh, the second one is uh, so such plus inversion. So I'm giving you an example right away. Uh, so scared was I that I couldn't speak. So light, so loudly did they play music that the neighbors called the police. Such an awful day was it that we stayed in. Such useful advice did she give me that everything went well. So for this one is a conditional plus inversion. It's basically an omission of if. So I'm giving you an example. Uh, from normal structure to inverted structure. So the normal structure will be if you should come, let me know. So if we invert it, it will be should you come, let me know. The other one is if I were you, I would accept the offer. So we invert, it will become were I you, I would accept the offer. Last one is, if you had come earlier, you would have met him. So we invert, it will be, had you come earlier, you would have met him. So another one is, uh, so, neither, nor, plus 
inversion. So the example is like this. Lah. Paul likes documentaries and so do I. Vivian went to the cinema and so did Anne. They did not go to the lecture and neither or nor did we. You have not finished your lunch and neither or nor have I. Okay. So final one is only. The inversion that comes after only. So you will get something like only after, only when, only if, only until, only by, not till or until. So I'm giving you three examples. First one, only after you do your homework will you go out. Second one, only when she got back home did she realize she had left her bag at work. Third one, only by studying hard will they pass their exams. Right. Now I'm going to go through uh, some of the common mistakes uh, that people make when uh, inverting sentences. So the first one, they mistaken an inversion with a passive sentence. Uh, this is quite normal for beginners. Uh. The other one is they try to invert the sentence, but the subject is still before the verb. Uh, that's wrong. And the third one is the wrong use of word and tenses. Uh, they change it up uh, basically. Uh, they change the sentence not according to the original sentence. They change it uh, the wrong way lah. Uh. And then the verb also being changed. You sh they should maintain uh, the verb and the tenses. I just they just have to invert the sentence lah. So now I'm going to give you some example of the mistake lah. Not once she asked me if I wanted to put my feet up. So the right answer would be not once did she ask me if I wanted to put my feet up. Uh, this is the mistake based on the uh, tenses lah. Uh, they should put past tense there. Second one is, rarely I have seen such an aggressive virus in a patient. So basically it's wrong. So the right one is, rarely have I seen such an aggressive virus in a patient. So this is uh, the wrong uh, placement. Uh. The other one is, uh, no way I would go on a space mission. The correct one would be, no way would I go on a space mission. The other one is, only I realized the computer had crashed did I start to think about all the work I have lost. The correct one would be, only when I realized the computer had crashed did I start to think about all the work I lost. Another example, not only have we finished this project once and for all, but we also have a week's holiday. So the correct one would be, not only have we finished this project once and for all but we also have a week's holiday so basically for this one they should put the sentence up because the sentence is wrong it should be past tense or last example is only when we arrived in Seville I did realize I had been there before so this one is wrong in terms of the structure and tenses so the correct one would be only when we arrived in Seville did I realize I had been there before so the, the placement is wrong lah. Did you know inversion is used after clauses beginning with no? So the standard uh, sentence would be I don't believe in scarcity and I don't believe that the grass is greener on the other side. So uh, when we invert the sentence you will be like I don't believe in scarcity nor do I believe that the grass is greener on the other side. The other one would be, or standard one, huh? standard standard, I haven't been to Japan and I don't expect to be there in the near future. So when we invert, we'll be like this, I haven't been to Japan, nor do I expect to visit there in the near future. So it's basically put no, put no there, and then uh, you invert, lah, put inversion in front of no, basically. Okay. Now, let's go through the exercises. Huh? So to recap, we know now how to use inversion with so, nor, neither. 
You also know how to use the inversion with negative adverbials or frequency like seldom, rarely, barely, hardly, never. And we also know how to use inversion with not only but also. And as a special bonus now, we know now how to use inversion with hardly, scarcely, barely. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now. Thank you.